So we've got our model, we've applied some uh, UV mapping to key areas which will allow us to texture later. Um, one thing I didn't mention previously is that you don't really need to UV map uh, before we do the lighting and applying basic colours now. You could always do it later or alternatively you can always just adjust the UVs as you're going. If you find that uh, some, some UVs aren't working how you previously created them feel free to change them or tweak them, they're not set in stone so you can play around with them as much as you like it's not like this is some uh, like a game model or a low res model where once you've set the UVs that's it they're set in stone with this we, they're quite fluid you can do pretty much what you like with them up until the final render and the final render is what we're going to start to look at now uh, and in this video we're just going to have a very quick look at uh, starting to set up the lighting for the scene and then in the next video we'll add some basic colors uh, and shaders uh, just to bring them all to life so this is the model all I've done is created a basic camera um, which is just set up to give us sort of an idea of the view she's going to be rendered from uh, and once we know this we can then start to think about where our lights are going to be where the shadows are going to be cast because we know that this is the point she's going to be rendered from. If I open up the render video uh, window, now up here you can see I've got her set to 2480 by 3508 resolution. That's pretty standard A4 size uh, for rendering out for print. But what we're going to do, what you can do, is rather than render out at that resolution all the time, you can go down to test resolution and set it to a smaller or a slightly larger size just for when you're doing test renders so for this we're just going to go in and do a quick render and this just shows us how she's looking now pretty much like she does in the viewport um, she's just got the basic Lambert uh, default Lambert shader applied to her so nothing special what we're going to do first is just add in some ambient lighting in the form of uh, a HDRI map, um, some indirect lighting uh, and uh, basic ambience. So we'll close that down. Now what we're going to do first is open up the camera attribute editor and just set up a background colour. Now here I already have like a sort of a dark pale blue. That's going to be our background color if I do a render now you'll see that the background is that color but nothing's really changed and that is until we open up our render options we're going to scooch along to quality and we'll do preview final gather and what that will do is it will use the background color as an ambient color to sort of light the model and light the scene so with that enabled let's do another render As you can see that has just uh, given the scene a bit more lighting now we still have the default light on so what I'm going to do is just go down to our options and turn off enable default light now the default light is just a light projected from the camera if we render this now as you can see this is just purely the ambient light and it's cast as if the light is coming from above so all the areas underneath will be nicely shaded uh, for you. So with that one in place, let's open up our options again. And we're going to go across to indirect lighting. And what we're going to do is we're going to create image-based lighting. And this will work off a HDRI map. So what I'm going to do is just quickly point this to an image to a file name and here we have one RNL probe uh, now this is uh, I found this on the internet there are loads of them out there um, this was by Paul Debevec if you want to google him um, and find some of his other stuff so what I'll do is I'll just close that down and you'll see in here it's created this sphere Just go to our perspective view so we can see it a bit better and this is what the lighting will be cast from it's going to use the information from this map and cast the lighting onto the model 
what we do need to do if I just open up the options for this cube again we notice it's we have this sort of swirl here and that's because the map isn't projected onto the sphere properly there are different types of HDRI map so you have a spherical option which maps it spherically which obviously isn't working for this particular map switch that to angular and that fixes it and makes it look a bit better we do have some pinching at the back here but that will be behind her so it doesn't really matter you can scale and rotate this map if you want to change uh, the size or the orientation to get certain sort of elements reflected or uh, projected onto the model but I'll leave it as it is there for now let's go back to our camera view and let's do a render now just see how much difference that has added so there you can see it's brightened up the scene a lot more ignore this blotchiness because you can change that later in the settings uh, when and it'll give you a much finer render remember at the moment we're just doing preview renders we're just getting a very basic idea of how it's going to look um, it's also rendered the image in the background but what we can do is just select that scroll down and turn off primary visibility do another render and there we go just got our background color but we've also got the lighting from this image based lighting from, well from the HDRI map so again that's just we're just layering up these different levels of lighting now this is probably going to be a little bit too bright so all I'm going to do is just come in now you can change down the hardware exposure but the color gain seems to work a little bit better we'll just turn that down just a little bit because what we're going to do is add in some more lighting um, and that multiplied by that will sort of blow areas out so you can see there it's just turned down the lighting a bit and obviously the color gain you can change that to a different color if you need to so we have our ambient lighting set up again it's only preview at the moment we can change settings later for our final render to get everything looking smoother now we need to create a main a key light and what this is going to do is cast our main shadows so we're just going to go in create light directional light move that over we'll just scale that up so we can see what we're doing I'm going to change lighting use selected lights and as you can see that's just showing how this light is affecting the model what we can also do is if we scroll down and turn on depth map shadows we can actually see now where the shadows are going to be cast so say we have our light there you can see the shadows cast across her face and across the book here just do a render And there we go we're getting a bit more depth into that model with these uh, shadows now for the final render we're not going to use depth map shadows we will be using ray trace shadows if I just render this let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see these in action now you can see with the depth map shadow we had quite a low resolution there but we're not planning on using those for the final render anyway so this Will be with the ray trace shadows now those edges are a lot sharper it's given us much nicer shadows but again we've got these sharp edges here we would ideally want these softening up so what we can do is we can change the light angle so let's change that to something like five what this will do this will soften the edges of the shadows so let's pick a point let's just do a head leave that to render as you can see the edges there have softened but they're also quite grainy to fix that we can change the amount of shadow rays used to calculate these lights so if we set that to 25 perhaps now obviously the higher these settings the longer it's going to take to render so it depends on your system let's render that again as you see it's still very slightly grainy so we may need to increase that but that's softened the edges of those ray trace shadows let's try down here 
And again, that's softened there. Still a little bit grainy, but we can fix that later on once we get into uh, uh, higher resolution renders and we're approaching the final uh, render. So we'll say that's our key light. That's casting the main light. That's giving us our, our main shadows. Why don't we just go in and add in a bit of backlight. So we're just duplicating that light. Now you could use a point light if you wanted for this. We're going to turn off the shadows. And there, because we've got use selected light on, we're only seeing how that light is affecting the model. So if we move that to a say like that, we're going to get the light just tracing around her nose and around her face. So let's render that out with the back light on and just see. And there you could, it's quite subtle around here, but that's just brought, brought that side of her body and the book, just pulled it out of the model slightly just to give it that little bit more depth and just to highlight that side of her body there. Now, if you wanted to, um, say we had a specular in her eyes, which we will have later on. Um, you have these two options here, Emit Diffuse and Emit Specular. Um, if you t um, well, Emit Specular, basically anything with a specularity, the light will shine in. So if it were her eyes, for example, you'd get highlights in her eyes. If that was off, you wouldn't get the highlights because it's not going to affect any specular. Emit diffuse is basically just the colour of the light. If we turn that off, you won't get the colour. You turn it on, you will. Um, to demonstrate this quickly, I'll just set that to red. So we have emit diffuse on. And what you'll see there, we've got the nice backlight, but because it's red, we're getting the red colour through. Turn it off. and we're not getting that colour in there, but we're also losing that backlight as well, because that lighting is coming from the diffuse. But all this will do is give you the highlights in the eyes, or if her skin has a specularity on it, um, it'll just give you those highlights. Let's turn this back to white for now. We can play around with these once we start playing with the main shaders. Let's just render that again. Now traditionally you would have a key light which gives you your shadows, a backlight like we have which just picks out the back of the model here, the darker areas of the model, but you'd also have a fill light which would fill the areas in between the front here between the two lights. Now we've got the ambient light and we've got the HDRI um, image and they're acting as the fill light for us. So there we have our scene basically lit. Feel free to go in and play around with the settings on a lot of these things just to get more of a feel for the lighting setup that you want to work with. But now we have this, we can move to the next stage where we can start playing around and add colours to her and just start to uh, build in basic shaders. Because you UV'd her earlier, feel free to start adding in textures if you want to. Um, or anything like that, but for now we're just going to focus on adding in some colour. So this is the render where we left off before. We've got the basic lighting in, but at the moment she looks more like a statue. So we're going to start to uh, add in some colour. Let's just turn off the lights so we're not confused. Let's go to our hypershade. And we're just going to create a blin. And we're going to assign this to her body. Let's move that over. So as you can see, we've already made that a lot more interesting because of the specularity. But now we can just go in and start to play around with these colours. Uh, what I'm going to do is press control and space just to make this a bit bigger just so we can see what we're doing. Press 
Control A to get up those options. So this being a skin, we're just going to maybe just add in some sort of basic skin color. We'll give her a bit of an ambient color as well, just to brighten up these darker areas. A bit darker, adjust the saturation slightly like so. We'll turn down the re reflectivity and the specular we're going to make blue. And again we can just tweak these settings just to tone that down a little bit. Open up our render. And what we can do actually is if it'll work Where's our IPR? Do an IPR render. And we can select a skin like so. And what this should do is update as we tweak it. So let's just ramp that up. That's automatically updated there. So let's turn that down because that's too shiny. And this will probably make that specular a little bit bigger. But again, turn that down. Although if it's too shiny, we can always just turn down the colour. As you can see, it's updating as we're changing. So maybe drop that down a little bit more. We can go up and change that ambient just to make her a little bit redder. But you get the basic idea with that. And then when we're ready, we'll just do a final render. Well, not a final render, but a proper render just to see it, how it's looking. So there, we're starting to get a basic skin color with basic skin tones. Again, some of the specular is a bit too bright. So maybe we just drop that down a little bit more. And at this stage, it's all about just tweaking, playing around with colours, just do it until you get something that you're happy with. So let's say we're happy with that. We'll render that. So that's the skin setup. And all we're going to do at this stage is go through and add that to all the other elements like her hair, jewellery, and all sorts of other bits like that. And what I'll do is I'll probably pause the video in a little while. I'll go through and get all those set up and then we'll come back and I'll talk you through some of the extra bits that I've added in. So say we are happy with our skin. What we can also do to this is enhance it a little bit more. We are getting a little bit of a highlight here from our backlight, but what we're gonna do is add in a, rim, a fake rim lighting, which will also help to pick out a lot of these darker areas which are getting missed by the main lights. So I'm just going to keep that render just so we've got something to compare it to. Open up our hyper shade like so. And what we need to do first is we're going to create a ramp. Like so. Let's move these out of the way. So this ramp is going to dictate the main colour. So we'll have the main colour of the uh, of her skin here. So if we uh, select that, maybe that one there. So at the moment, we've got a main colour there, and the rim lighting is going to be red. What we'll do is we'll leave that as it is for now, just so we can see it in action. If we pull those together, so it just makes the room lighting a little bit sharper. That's set to V ramp. Now at the moment, if we pipe that into the color channel, you're not going to see much difference. It's just going to look a little bit odd, and these will work off the UVs. What we need to do is create a utility 
scroll down uh, sampler info move that over there and then we're going to drag onto the ramp with our middle mouse button click other and what we're interested in is the facing ratio and what this will do is it will tell Maya the actual edges of the model so whatever the camera is looking at the facing ratio will tell Maya where the edges of the model are and what we want to do is pipe that in to the V chord like so now this was set to V ramp so this is going to use this this and the sampler info as you can see on this uh, preview here so it's using the V ramp so this is at the edge of the model at the bottom here and the top is at the middle of the model so if we open up our render view let's do another render and just see how that's affected the model now it's a bit extreme but you can see how this is highlighting the edges here and that's just going to pick out those details and now we can just maybe pull that down make that edge a bit softer again do another render as you can see that's a lot more subtle so when we get something we're a bit more happy with we can adjust the ramp so let's say make that skin color but maybe a little bit brighter like so let's just render this see how this is looking as you can see there it's just picked out that edge of her face there if we compare that with the render before it's quite subtle particularly down here if I just zoom in a bit it's going to go a bit pixely but you might if you look at the face here and round the back here that's before that's after and obviously we can increase that under that again and then we compare before after before after as you can see it's just highlighting those edges um, I'm not sure if I showed you but I piped the um, the ramp into the color channel now you can if I open up the hyper shade so let's just open up a render so this is it in the color channel we'll keep that one open up the hyper shade and what we're going to do is we will break that connection set that skin color back to how it was before and this time we're going to put the ramp into the incandescence now if you're doing it into incandescence you don't need to have this skin color here set that needs to be black as you could see there on the uh, preview if I undo that the skin color is adding to the color which is already there um, and blowing it completely out so you have to make that color black so you're effectively only using the rim and as you can see the outside of that is really bright so if we render this one just to compare Now already you can see that has just really brightened up all these other areas here. So that's with in, it piped into incandescence. That's with it piped into colour. And that's with none. So you can see the different degrees you're getting. Now personally I prefer it piped into the colour channel. Because the areas of the model that are supposed to be darker are, are kept darker. Whereas if you have the incandescence channel, you can see every edge is light, regardless of where the lighting is coming from or the shading. So it's completely up to you. It's what your visual style is or how you're, you want to uh, work with it. 
So that is just us setting up the skin. What you should do now is go through and set it up for all the other elements, the hair, her eyes, uh, her eyebrows, uh, just everything. So it's got this sort of colouring and then you're going to start to get a better idea of how the scene is, is balancing out with your lighting and your colours. What I'll do now is I'll pause this um, and I'll load in one that I have done earlier. So here she is, all the, the basic shaders applied, um, exactly the same scene. We've just, uh, I've just probably tweaked the lights slightly. Um, I've added in this floor plane just to give a, a subtle shadow underneath the book. Uh, but all the shaders, just basic shaders as I showed you uh, before, just with a, rim, a subtle rim lighting added in there. If I just zoom in. You can see we've got the rim lighting, just particularly on the hair, it's just highlighting these back sections of the hair here. But what it's also showing up is the fact that this hair just looks completely flat. But with the, now we've UV'd them all, uh, with the help of a bump map, we could just add in some basic strips of hair and hair detail. As you can see, with the, uh, the jewellery here, which is gold, I just up, select it, open up the options. Here we have the shader, it's just a basic, a fong this time, as a fong works better for metallic objects. Um, we just have our ramp set up. It's very, very much the same as before. We've got an ambient colour. We have our specular colour set up and all we've done is added a re reflectivity value to that. And what it does is because we have the uh, HDRI map acting as our lighting, it also shows up in reflections. So rather than having to fake the reflections in this, we're getting these nice reflections from that map. And we're also getting them in the eyes, in the jewellery, uh, and all of the areas where we've uh, added in the reflectivity uh, attribute. You'll also notice I've just added in uh, an image into the background. Again, I'm just playing around with ideas as to how the whole image is going to sit together. Um, if you know what sort of background image or colour you're going to use, it's important to get that in as well, and then you can balance that out with your colours of your character and the lighting in the scene, just to get them all right. Um, so that's it for this video on just setting up the basic shaders. I'm not going to go into the details of adding in the textures. Uh, I'm sure you're well aware of how to do that yourself. Um, one thing I will say is if you're using these uh, rim shaders, you don't pipe the texture into your colour channel. What you need to do Go into your rim shader, this colour here, which is your main colour, just go down here, click here, file, and then select your diffuse texture map. And then what that will do is that will keep your rim lighting and apply it on top of your diffuse texture. So if you want to add in textures for the book, uh, for the pages, uh, a bump map for a hair, anything like that, you feel free to add all that in now. Um, in the next video, what we'll do is just we will look at um, finalizing the render um, and adding in render layers, um, render passes, sorry, and just getting her ready for the final render.